My name is Todd Harrington. I'm a neurologist at Mass General Hospital and the director of the Deep Brain Stimulation Program. A deep brain stimulator is like a brain pacemaker. A neurosurgeon places two small wires in the brain at very specific structures and then a battery unit in the chest. And through this battery, we can deliver stimulation to the brain to treat symptoms of Parkinson's disease like tremor, slowness, and stiffness. I was motivated to go undergo DBS because it alleviated a lot of my symptoms at the time. Right hand tremor, uh, uh, rigidity, and uh, uh, stiffness. You don't have to be awake when you have DBS surgery. You can be asleep, fully asleep, as I was. <laughs> and it makes it a lot more tolerable. I think a lot more people would appreciate knowing that they could be fully asleep and still have a, a great outcome with the device. And it may, I'm, pretty much normal. I can walk, I can talk, I can write, I can uh, eat, pour, pour water, um, brush my teeth. I can do all kinds of things that we might take for granted before, before Parkinson's, but I knew I couldn't do anymore. It helped me alleviate a lot of those symptoms. And I can take my wife out to walk to, to, to a restaurant without being stared at and whispered and so forth. So it, it really opened up a, a normal life for me, frankly. For most people with Parkinson's, DBS helps to reduce tremor and reduce fluctuations that result from their Parkinson's medications kicking in and then feeling better and then wearing off and then feeling worse. And smoothing out those motor fluctuations can dramatically improve people's quality of life. The idea of adaptive deep brain stimulation is to use the DBS device to record brain activity and to use that brain activity to guide the amount of stimulation being delivered from moment to moment. The hope is that the stimulation delivered can more closely meet the person's need at that time, leading to better control of symptoms and fewer side effects. Well, in Parkinson's disease, there's a particular rhythm or oscillation in the brain called the beta band oscillation that appears to be elevated when people are experiencing more slowness and stiffness from their Parkinson's. So the current implementations of adaptive deep brain stimulation record this beta band activity and adjust the level of stimulation in response to fluctuations in that beta band power. Currently, there are two different adaptive DBS modes or algorithms that have been approved. One called single threshold adaptive DBS. Uh, responds to brain signals and adapts multiple times per second if necessary. The other mode, called dual threshold adaptive DBS, responds more gradually to changes that might occur as medications come on or wear off. Well, I knew that there was gonna be a challenge with the adjustability of the, the device. I knew it was a continuous mode, one set and forget it fixed uh, level, if you will. And I knew that the adaptive DBS would help alleviate that by automatically adjusting periodically. So I knew that before I even had the DBS surgery. And so signing up for the to trial was just a, a no brainer for me. Well, with, with the adaptive DBS, I'm able to basically go about my day without having to bring the controller around with me and adjusting because what happens is, is the, the waves, the uh, beta waves, the LFPs fluctuate during the day. And if it goes above, I have to adjust. If it goes below, I have to adjust or I get dyskinesia. So I have to bring the controller around with me and, and adjust constantly throughout the day. With Adapt DBS, I don't have to do that at all. It self-adjusts. Within two or three seconds, it adjusts to whatever my, my symptoms are, are calling for at that time. Deep brain stimulation is currently approved by the FDA to treat Parkinson's disease, essential tremor, dystonia, epilepsy, and obsessive compulsive disorder. Right now, adaptive deep brain stimulation has just been approved for Parkinson's disease, but there are active investigations here and around the world trying to identify strategies to use adaptive deep brain stimulation for these other conditions as well.